Well, hello, good people of the earth. Today, we're going to talk about CSS, mastering CSS step by step. Now, you may think you know CSS, you may try things by Googling, let's say if I want to put some elements somewhere, I would Google it, and I place it there, I would have to basically pray the God that when somebody shrinks this page, the element won't move from there, which is not a good thing. I think you need to predictably know that this element will behave this way. And that knowledge is only acquired if you learn things systematically. You learn the fundamentals and you follow a particular path. So today we're gonna go through a particular path where I'm gonna show you very basic to very advanced. Uh, we're gonna go through some framework, some methodology, uh, preprocessor, some tools, all of it uh, to become a master or an expert. I don't know the difference between two, but basically very good at CSS. And welcome to Texas Tutorials. What is the first thing you wanna learn? Well, uh, you need to have your HTML fundamentals, how the HTML dome works, right? The second thing you wanna learn is CSS selectors. Let's say if I wanna apply some style to a particular element or a group of elements, I need to be able to access them. So you need to learn uh, IDs, selectors, classes, attributes. You also need to uh, learn some complex selectors, like if I wanna select um, only children of this parent and only direct children or all the children, there's some pseudo uh, classes like first child, last child, nth child, you know, all of these would help you um, understand how to select things. All right, so now you know how to select things. Now let's understand the box model. Um, a lot of interviewers ask you this particular question, what is a box model and how it works? Basically it's nothing but um, your content, your padding, margin, border, uh, all of this makes it a box model. And one of the important properties you wanna learn in that is box sizing. Um, I'm not gonna go through it, but uh, I might make a tutorial on it later on. All right, so the next thing you wanna learn is uh, viewport units. What are viewport units? Uh, basically, if I wanna give a width or height to some element, I would usually say 500 pixels, right? Uh, so PX is basically a unit. Uh, you can use EM, um, or you can use newer ones like VH, VW, Vmin, Vmax. These are all examples of newer units that were introduced recently. But the main important thing is you need to understand which one to use when because they, they all have it, their own application. All right, so after that, you need to understand how to build a layout. Uh, and if I wanna build a layout, I need to place an element and make sure that it stays there, right? Uh, for that, there are uh, three more main important properties you need to learn. Um, and I cannot emphasize more that these are so important. Uh, when I learned them, uh, I was like, oh, I know how, I know how CSS works, okay? Uh, so master this property. And one of the first property is display property. You know, uh, display static, uh, block, inline block, inline flux. Uh, the second one is position property. They go kind of hand in hand. And you need to understand static, uh, relative, absolute, sticky, fixed, and other. And then you need to understand Z index. So if you have, you can actually, um, when you have an element on the, on the top of another element, which one will show up on the top? Uh, the stacking order uh, is decided by Z index, right? I think after that you can you can learn all the other elements like uh, background color, color, font, overflow. Uh, th there are lots of others that I'm not gonna go through it, but uh, they're pretty simple. Uh, you just have to you know try them out and uh, as you go along. All right, so the next thing is uh, specificity. What is a specificity? A lot of people don't know. <laughs> Uh, how it works. So basically, if I have an element uh, with two conflicting styles, let's say if I add an ID and a class, 
and ID says that this background color of this element should be red, and the class says it should be green. Now, which one wins, right? So the specific city decides which one wins. In this case, the ID would win because uh, it has a higher specific city. Okay, so there are a set of rules in specificity that decides uh, which style actually wins. And if you understand them, then a lot of confusion would uh, would be okay. So then uh, you can look at some pseudo elements, like uh, if you have a paragraph and you want to style the first letter of the the paragraph, you can do it using using colon colon uh, first first letter first line, these are all the pseudo elements. All right, once you know that, I think you're ready for some responsive uh, design, okay? So most of us probably know by now what a responsive uh, page would be. And I can write some media query where it says, okay, between this pixel size and this pixel size, I wanna, sh I wanna have this uh, styles applied, and between this, I wanna this styles applied, okay? Uh, next, I would learn CSS variables. So let's say if I want to change some size of something dynamically, um, I did not have any way of doing it, but now they have introduced CSS variables, which allows you to actually change the variable and have some formula which calculates the size and all that stuff, right? Color and everything, right? Uh, so you, you can have a very dynamic live uh, uh, a page. And I also have a plan to make a video on that. All right, so the next thing you wanna learn, and this is probably nowadays, a, a one of the biggest thing that you wanna learn is a Flexbox. Uh, before Flexbox, centering elements inside another element was like a nightmare, okay? But now with the, with the Flexbox, you can do pretty much anything. You can make any kind of layout using a Flexbox. You have, there's a, uh, flex direction, uh, flex grow, justify content would help you uh, basically arrange your elements in order, vertical, horizontal, whichever you like. And it's now becoming very essential uh, to CSS. All right, so now let's move to some advanced stuff. Uh, now that we have understood some of the basics of CSS. Uh, so let's move to preprocessors. What are preprocessors in CSS? Uh, SAS, less. These are preprocessor. Most of us probably used it. Uh, basically, you write a CSS in one form, and it it kind of transpiles to some uh, a different CSS. So you can use uh, inheritance and things like that. All right. So if you want to become a CSS architect, right, uh, then you need to understand some of the methodology, right? Uh, if you have a large project, and um, we need to plan. You, how you how you're gonna use CSS? You need to have sta some standards, uh, and we all know that you can mess up CSS very easily. One of the methodologies is called BAM. Um, a few years ago, it was very popular. Basically, it's called block, element, and modifier. So basically, you identify uh, things like header, container, menu as blocks, uh, menu item, list item as your elements. And modifiers would be, you know, something uh, that changes the appearance of appearance of your elements, like disable, highlighted, checks, etc. Right. So what do you get from uh, using BAM? Um, you get more modularity, usability, and structure. And your your team, uh, once they know to follow this standard, you will have less mistakes uh, and a smooth project. Um, because with CSS, anything could happen. But nowadays, there is a new methodology called functional CSS, uh, which is getting more popular. And it's actually pretty simple. When I first heard of it, um, the concept, I was like, okay, how, does it, how is it gonna solve my problem? But when I started using it, I can see that it's so effective. Uh, so basically, the concept is very simple. Uh, you will have a bunch of classes and each class will be associated with like one style. So let's say if I wanna have a margin five pixel, I would call it a class called margin dash five or something, right? 
Uh, so when I apply these kind of classes to my element, I would have to apply lots of classes. It's almost like an inline CSS, but instead of styles, I'm using, you know, a classes. Um, there are uh, already libraries available like Tachyon, Tailwind, which you can use in your project, uh, where they have built this library of classes, which you can use, and it has, they're very shorthand. You have to, you have to remember a lot of them, uh, but um, or you can create your own on the top of it. It doesn't matter, but do check it out. And also there are some other stuff that you want to learn like uh, Shadow Dome. Uh, also, if you want to learn animation, you can learn CSS animation. All right, so that's about it. I'm, I'm sure I have missed a few. Uh, so if I have missed something, then remind me. And there are a lot of other things out there that I haven't covered. Uh, so if you're using something that I haven't covered, let me know. I would like to know and I would like to uh, share uh, that with my audience. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And I hope you learned something from this video. And if you did, please like. Don't forget to like. Like, subscribe and provide a small comment or large comment. Doesn't matter. But do comment. And you can help this channel uh, via Patreon. I'll provide a link here. Uh, you can also translate this video for me. Easy, I'll provide a link in the description. And thank you.